Hello and welcome back to another 1001 Beers You Must Try Before You Die. I am here in my garden. Um, uh, it's about, I don't know, about f half past five in the afternoon. I thought I'd do a beer review before doing a virtual pub this evening with Sir Quino and his wife. So, uh, had some beers in the fridge for a while. So this one uh, and the next one I'm going to do off this are, uh, f the, are from Spain. And my good friend Paul brought them back for me. He went to, to Barcelona and he brought them back. So... This one, first brew 2007, it's 5.1% and it is Malta by uh, Cervezera del Montseny. Uh, never had any of their beers before. Um, there are three in the book, I've got two of them. So it says, uh, I'll talk about it in a minute, but let's crack it open. I've got a lovely new Soundwave glass from Sirencraft here, beautiful, perfect for it to go in. It's an English pale ale apparently. Almost certainly not bottle conditioned, but it is fizzy. Oh, I think I'm going to enjoy this. That is really... Well, let's settle down for a minute and I'll pour more of it in a sec. So, tasty notes. Amber red in colour, sitting behind a firm white head. Yes, it is a firm white head. Uh, on the nose, it has sweet, malty, almost fruity notes. The palate maintains a similar fruity sweetness, although the clean bitterness and roasted hints balance this out. Malta is bottled unfiltered. Okay, well, does that mean it is actually bottle conditioned? Well, that's going to be fun, isn't it? Doesn't look like it is. It looks like it's... Who knows? Just drink the whole lot. There isn't a lot of choice, really, because it went a bit mad. Doesn't look like it looks all right. Uh, right, I just sat down for a minute. Uh, so love the design. It's nice that it's actually they've updated their design since the since the book was produced. It's very bold. It's lovely. It's got these fermenters on here. It's got this big bold Montseny uh, malt bay on gluten. That basically means very low gluten. Uh, it doesn't bother me because I'm not gluten. Uh, I don't have a gluten intolerance. English style craft beer, its top fermentation gives it a roast colour and intense flavour. Okay, and then some websites and all that. Okay, yeah, it is bottle conditioned. Never mind. Right, well, I've got. It has gone absolutely bonkers. Uh, it smells nice. I'm going to have to drink through it. It smells like an English bitter, which is really interesting. Let's, let's, let's try and get through this. Mm. There's lots of thrust in my tongue. It tastes like a strong English pale. Exactly what it tastes malty as anything. Robust, almost toffee-like character. It's very nice. I can see they've tried to absolutely produce an English style here. And it succeeded. It's like a strong a strong IPA in the kind of the traditional sense. Or just an IPA actually. It's 5.1. It is a how IPAs are supposed to be originally, or were, were not supposed to, be, but were, how they were originally. Um, it is just really carbonated. Uh, obviously, it's undergone a lot of secondary fermentation in the bottle. Uh, this is so. This is their version of pale ale. It's produced with a nod towards traditional English style rather than North American favourites. Uh, favourites. Pale, crystal and wheat malts make up the grain bill, while Challenger, East Kent, Golding and Fuggle in whole flower form are the hops responsible for the bitterness. Well, that makes a lot of sense. They're using English hops. That's what it tastes like, an English pale. That is interesting. It's really interesting to see someone do English pales. The beer goes through secondary fermentation in the bottle. The processor helps the formation of its sturdy yet mouth-pleasing carbonation. Okay, that explains a lot, and that's why it's so bonkers. It is really nice. It's very tasty. I'd hoped to pour it in one fluid motion, but it was, it's so, I mean, look, it's absolutely still a huge amount of head on that. It's almost ice cream in there, actually, as you can see that. Um, all the beers they make are unpasteurized and unfiltered, and they only use whole flower hops. Such practices are taken for granted from the craft beer community in the United Kingdom and North America, but in Spain, where the majority of beer lovers drink cold and crisp lagers, the same thought is not necessarily given to the production and aesthetic. 
uh, to inform the public's opinion of craft beers, the, the brewery organised many beer festivals together with other local microbreweries in which people have an opportunity to talk with the brewers and get a chance to learn about craft beer. All that is really interesting. There is also a uh, some sort of reserve version of this beer available as well, um, which is not in the book, and I will not be trying. I've not got it. So, uh, a lovely beer. I'm going to happily drink the rest of this, even though I'm, I've now got kind of what was unfilled in the bottle but you know what sod it in for a penny in for a pound let's have the whole lot uh ice cream and all need a flake for this goodness right i'll leave it there long like comment subscribe and i'll see you for another beer review very very soon